Hello and welcome to episode 7 of Chai Me Bitch <laughs> So today, clearly, I have a very special guest And right beside me, we have Karina from AWARE She's the executive director of AWARE So thank you so much for joining us on episode 7 of Chai Me Bitch <laughs> My pleasure, thank yeah. you for having me Of course And today, I'm finally going to treat my guest with the respect she deserves Because eh? all along, I just bring my friends on this show I have way too much fun and I'm always like Insulting them most of the time So finally Finally you're going to see me be Proper <laughs> No I'm kidding We're going to have a lot of fun either way And yeah Thank you so much for doing this And as with every episode We're going to start by Having a glass of chai So um, Unfortunately today We didn't get my mom's chai Because my mom Has work And you know She has actual real things to do Other than make, make her daughter chai For her podcast <laughs> So I, I don't have my mom's chai today So I'm sorry about that But one day you will try it It's amazing but instead, we have Thai ice milk tea. So, Wee Sun, please <laughs> come on in to the set to help serve us <laughs> the tea. <sighs> I love making Wee Sun do these things <laughs> that he really didn't sign up for. <laughs> yeah, so... Thank you very much. <laughs> See, finally, one guest who thanked you. You did that very well. <laughs> I mean, he's done this seven times. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so we have the chai now And also shout out to everyone on set So shout out to Jaden behind the cameras Making all this look great Shout out to Wisan for amazing tea pouring apparently <laughs> Shout out to Alif for the soundboard That I'll be using throughout this whole episode And yeah, with all that out of the way I think today this episode is actually going to be A really important one Because we're going to talk about a lot of heavy stuff But it's about time we had conversations like this So we're going to talk about things like gender equality A lot of sexist laws from around the world And we're also going to talk about a lot of like Fun stuff coming up uh, for AWARE Like AWARE Fest And we're going to share with you guys more details And where you can find it What's going to be happening And what you need to know like, basically So let's begin by talking a little bit about, about your backstory So okay. a little birdie told me that you've been with AWARE since 1992 so, yes. <laughs> wow. That's how has it been? <laughs> how has it changed, you know, since oh, 28 years ago? Um so much has changed. Mm -hmm. And uh so it's been more than half of my life. Mm -hmm. And I started as a volunteer in 1992 and at that time I was still a lawyer. Mm -hmm. I was doing two jobs basically, my day job and then my more exciting, more fulfilling night job, mm -hmm. which kept me going in the day job. The day job paid my bills. Mm -hmm. um, and at that time, I think gender equality was really not quite what it is today. There were overtly sexist laws. Like, you look at the law, it's like, how oh, can that be? Right? But those are gone. Mm -hmm. Right? So now it's about the application of the laws may still lead to sexist results. Mm -hmm. Um, and some laws can be much more supportive as well, right, of gender equality or of women. Mm -hmm. and I, th I think when we talk about, like, when we hear gender inequality, the first few things that, like, come to mind right now in 2020, I, I would say are things like pay gap. <laughs> you know, that's one big thing that we have been talking about for a long time. And s that sadly, that hasn't changed much. Yeah. So, and yeah. That's why we need to talk about it. <laughs> that's why we need to keep, like, reminding everyone that this needs to go, this needs to stop. And, Equal rights needs to be a thing from the get go, and because it hasn't been, we can like we need people like us, I guess, to constantly keep talking about it and fighting for equal rights. Mm. And I mean, like, apparently, um, the d pay difference between men and women is so vast that it's going to take two hundred and two years to fully bridge that gap. That's according to the World Economic Forum, lah. So not my fake news, huh? Don't worry. But yeah, that's insane to hear that because we would not even be around when that happens. And I mean, it's good to know that I guess the future generations will hopefully benefit from conversations like this and a lot of people like pushing for all these amazing things that we need to have in place. So yeah, I mean, I guess we do a lot of these things today in hopes that 
future yep. generations can benefit lah. Yeah, so I guess when we talk about gender inequality, what are some other like things that stick out to you other than like pay gap? What are some other like very prevalent issues today? I think the fundamental issue are certain uh, beliefs mm-hmm. and norms. Uh, what what co- causes the pay gap? So the main root cause is about the role of women, uh, perceived role of women as the primary caregiver, mm-hmm. right? And that men are supposed to be the primary breadwinner. Mm-hmm. And that then trickles down to, to many things, right? Uh, including the gender pay gap. Mm-hmm. Uh, including who's supposed to give care in the home. Uh, so I think that has to be fixed, but that's hard to fix because it goes down to our socialization mm-hmm. And how do you change generations of how people have been thinking about these things? Yeah, and it has to start uh, with... But it, it, is st- it, it has changed, mm-hmm. right? Once women started to be out in the workforce a lot more, and kids saw their moms working as their dads were, then this generation of younger people actually have a different way of thinking about this compared to my generation. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like I think now it's such a novelty to see someone who's a stay-at-home dad, you know? It's such a... Like, people like yeah. make a huge deal about it, but I'm like, that's completely <laughs> fine, you know? Like, someone needs to take care of the kids. It doesn't have to always be the female of the house. Yeah, I think when you see that change, when that's no longer a novelty, mm. that is actually uh, going to be a milestone. We've never had that, mm. right? And even now, so, th- so women going out into the workforce has happened a lot more than men uh, being at home mm. and taking care of the, domes- the, the, the domestic um, arena. Mm. Right? So I think this is where the imbalance is. So yeah. then you have super women, right? Mm. People who can do like three things, yeah. three major things, right? Bring, bring the bacon home, take care of the kids, mm. and then sometimes be an MP or something. Yeah. <laughs> so you, you have Can that. Really doing yeah. all that. <laughs> yeah. uh, and you don't see as many men uh, serving both roles in the same way that you see many women serving two full-time roles. Mm. Yeah, I also think like it definitely goes boils down to like how you were brought up as well. Like, you know, looking at your parents and just seeing how like, like I guess for me growing, growing up, like I always like talked about this with my friends and like my dad was quite misogynistic. So like my mom was the mom who like used to be a school teacher, right. taught in primary schools and everything and then gave up her job for a long time because she had to take care of the children. Right. So like I seeing that, I'm like, now now I'm just like, oh, man, you know, I never want to like, like it sucks that my mom needed to do that, you know, but I'm so glad like now she's in her 60s and she's like, okay, my kids are grown up. I yep. don't have to take care of my children. And my mom's back working again and she's like, so happy to do this she's not working because she needs to like make ends meet but she's working because she she loves it she's loved it for so long she didn't get to do it like yeah. for a long time in her life so like seeing that makes me so happy and I'm just like I never want this to be the case you know I never ever want to like be like the people around me I never want them to feel like oh no one of one of us has to like give up this like dream or passion because you just gotta do what you gotta do I mean yep. I think it's it just boils down to compromising of course and like trying to figure out what works for like both the parents at home or like mm. all the family members and of course like when kids are old enough to take care of themselves you don't let your parents go do what they've always wanted to do because they clearly didn't get to like for a long time because they had to raise you <laughs> so yeah you know I, I like seeing my mom obviously be like an example in my life and I'm just like she's so cool I want to be doing ag- exactly what I want in, like when I'm 60 you know yeah, yeah. so that's interesting right because uh, Singapore is an aging uh, population mm-hmm. and we will all have you know probably more than one career mm-hmm. or more than two careers and you can count uh, actually having to be a stay-at-home mom mm-hmm. at a certain point in your life as actually part, uh, as one of the careers mm-hmm. and then you can go on in your 50s and 60s to to another career mm. and what's important is that those opportunities must exist so at nowadays when we talk about gender e- equality mm-hmm. we have to talk about how it intersects with other issues yeah. and that includes uh, the job market, uh, ageism, mm-hmm. how it intersects with, you know, housing. Mm. And so, yeah, all of those, we can't just talk about gender equality and yeah. uh, where's work. In the past, one of the differences is that we focus on s- things that affected women mainly. Mm-hmm. But nowadays, we are talking about housing, mm. uh, income, the uh, conditions of work, things that affect everyone but affect women in different ways 
and in ways that uh, create very sometimes much more adverse conditions than for men. Yeah, and I think sometimes it's not as um, straightforward or as blatant. You know, like you have to break down all these issues and you have to realize how like it, like what you said, intersects with everything and anything in life. Like yep. it's not just oh, you know, job or just pay, you know, and stuff like that. It really boils down to, like, even when we talk about race, you know, you can't just talk about like one issue. It goes back to housing, all these things that you mentioned. So yeah, I think like breaking it down is important because we see like in our daily lives, there's so many things that we should change and we should start talking about and like trying to actively like bridge this gap between mm. like men and women. So I think like when we look at this on a global kind of standpoint, like in the 1920s, women were allowed to vote in the US, like that, that's just literally... Do you know when we got our vote in Singapore? I don't know when, but I just voted for my first time this year. <laughs> so I'm like, I'm glad I can. But I don't know when. 1942. Oh, wow. 22 years after the US. Yeah, so, um, you know, when we were under colonial rule, mm-hmm. we already had the vote. Mm. Okay, wow. I had no idea. Mm. Thank you for that. Fun, <laughs> not, not so fun <laughs> fact, but kind of fun fact. <laughs> yeah, so um, also in Switzerland, 1986... Uh, women were allowed to vote in nationwide polls. And wow, so we got the vote f- earlier. Before Switzerland, yeah. yeah and and Switzerland was quite late, actually. Do you want to know what's one of the m- way more recent ones? Saudi Arabia. Women were allowed to vote for the first time Not in surprised. local elections in 2015. Well, they were just allowed to drive, yeah. right? So <laughs> taking it and getting the vote is a big deal for it's Saudi Arabia. And, but why, why, do you think, why do you think like it took them so long, like specifically? Uh, you know, it's to do with um, the culture, the mm-hmm. values, the laws, the beliefs yeah. of that country, right? I, I'm learning so much when I talk about this. And I think that's why it's important to talk about it. Because even with like elections this year, like it was something that I personally was not even invested in until I realized that, okay, this is my first time voting. I, even though I don't know much, it's about time I learn and I start talking about these things. Because so many other people out there are watching my content and they're also voting for the first time. Right. And even though I'm like very publicly trying to make sense of a lot of these things and trying to understand it on my own so many people can like learn along with me so I think like that's why a podcast like this also like I know like some of my listeners are 16 (laughs) you know like they're really young and maybe have not had conversations about gender equality or gender roles or anything like that or stereotypes and yeah so I think we need to start talking about these things young and of course in school I don't think we are thought to have conversations like this. So 16 is the age of consent as well. Mm, yeah. Right? For very sex. important age. Yeah, it's yes. a very important age. It is. And I had an episode about like, I talked about sexual harassment and everything and I talked about the age of consent. So, uh, I know a lot of my followers, you're all very young, so I hope you're <laughs> abiding by the law. And <laughs> I think when we talk about like the education system, I think off, off air just now, we've talked about sex education very briefly. And that is something that I definitely wish like we could shine way more spotlight on and we can actually like talk about properly in school because yep. it's a very like of course heteronormative it's very like okay this has to happen this way and you know we don't have the proper conversation so a lot of kids are left like to believe that oh no things can only happen one way and if this happens like there is a running joke in Mean Girls you know like the, the teacher the gym teacher says in the movie Mean Girls like don't have sex because you'll get pregnant and die <laughs> like that's how they scare kids to not have sex and that's like I'm glad that does not happen here, but it's just we don't have conversations about. We what still show scary pictures of STDs. We still so try and yeah, scare yeah, kids. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly, yeah. and that's like that's not okay. So, what are your thoughts about sex education in Singapore? Uh, I think that it can be um, more progressive, mm-hmm. and uh, you know, it can also be broader. You know, sex ed doesn't have to be to be just purely about sex. Yeah. I think it. What is very important are things like. Uh, relationships Mm -hmm. and the idea of consent and what is that Mm -hmm. Uh, even gender roles right Uh, so that can all be a part of a broader sex education Mm -hmm. right which I and I think that it has to start young Um, it although 16 is the age of consent we really should be starting to move into this area just a idea of consent Mm -hmm. doesn't have to be about sexual consent but kids should start thinking about or being taught what consent is Mm -hmm. Uh, from the time that they are seven, eight, mm. right? You slowly move uh, move into sexual consent. Yeah, and of course, consent applies with like anything and everything in your life, and it's a very important exactly. thing to like, be taught about when you are a child because it could even be as simple as like li- literally just learning how to say no as a kid. You yep. know, you're not not being like coerced into doing anything you just don't want to. So I think, of course, I think the conversation. Yeah, anything that makes you uncomfortable, you should be able to to say no, right? Mm. And and empowered to do so. Yeah, and I think like what you said is so important. Like sex education is literally not 
just about sex. There is so many layers to this and, and consent, of course, is one of the biggest things that we need to talk about more. And in school, I really, I really wish they had a whole chapter <laughs> about it when they talked about sex yeah. ed because all they talked about was like, how do you put on a condom? <laughs> you know, they talked about things like that, which was like, okay, why is this getting so graphic? <laughs> why could you just tell me like the words I'm supposed to use or things I can say or like things I can say They to told say you no. about how to wear, a, uh, put on a condom? Yeah, it was on a banana. Oh really? Yeah, it was which a school video. was that? That's pretty good. I was in Newtown Secondary School. Oh, yeah, I remember we. Oh, all actually, I thought that they didn't teach it. that, but yeah. yeah so, so some of the things like consent. I mean, to get more concrete, you know, I hear a lot of girls that you know say, "I actually didn't want sex," but I, the, the guy said, "If you don't, then mm. I will leave you, and I will go to another girl." Mm. And so that's why I consented. Yeah. And so then the question is: Is that consent or not? Yeah. And then. Uh, now, legal consent is one thing, and it's actually quite a narrow definition, but also there is the ethical idea of consent, right? Mm. Um, and I think that needs to be taught as well to mm. kids. Like, if you're not comfortable, don't do it because you want this. Yeah. yeah. And I you're, think you're worth much more than that. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> and I think we always talk about like the ideal situation, like, oh, you're in a relationship and this happens. But I think realistically, a lot of people find themselves in very, very different situations. Yeah. It's, the, it, it's not necessarily you've been with this person for years and you are in a position where you're like, might be having sex for the first time. You know, you, people find themselves in a lot of crazy situations. And yeah. I think we need to start talking about all those, like not, you know, not not the not the immediate thing you think about when you're having sex for the first time. You need to talk about all the other like crazy situations that people have actually been in and have found themselves in very uncomfortable situations. Like those things need to be addressed. Yeah. yeah. So so um, just to share, we have some experience still doing sex ed. So one, we do it with parents. Mm -hmm. Not that we're teaching them sex ed, but we're <laughs> teaching them how to teach their kids yeah. about <laughs> sex ed, right? Uh, because if you don't um, speak to your parents about this. Um, and you may not be getting the sex ed that you need in schools, mm. then if you actually are in trouble, who are you going to speak to, yep. right? And if your parents are not the ones teaching you about this, you're learning it from the internet. Mm -hmm. And you can have all sorts of, you know, different yeah. things being taught to you. <laughs> some mm. right, some wrong, right, <laughs> through the internet. Um, but we also actually do uh, sex ed in some of the international schools. Mm -hmm. And the syllabus there is quite progressive. Okay. And what we found is that, so the idea is we give kids enough information mm -hmm. uh, to make the right decision for themselves. Mm -hmm. So you need to have also that trust. These kids are, you know, 14 to 18 mm -hmm. and they actually are mature enough, right, yeah. to actually make these decisions. So you, you don't try to scare them. You give them the information and with that information, what we found was that many of them did say, actually with this, I... I have decided to defer the time mm. that I'm going to have sex because I just don't feel ready. Yeah. Right. So kids will actually make the right decision. Yes. Right. So if you actually tell mm. them the right information. Yeah. Essentially, it's just making an informed decision. Yes. Yeah. It's just knowing enough, knowing and yes. knowing that you have avenues to just ask, ask questions and learn more yeah. and just like whatever scary thought is in your head, you can put out there because you know that you have a source of information and that person's obviously not going to judge you because they want you to be aware of these things. So, yeah, I think I think making an informed decision as a kid and making a decision like that is... It needs to be super informed. <laughs> you can't just get into something like this. And yep. of course, like, growing up, I hear a lot of, like, my, my peers, my friends, like, from secondary school, I hear all the stories, I hear everything, I hear how many of them have been coerced into doing things they don't want to do, the amount of unwanted pregnancies that I've heard of, you know, and it's and it's so scary. And I'm, and I'm very, very, like, grateful that... I have a cool mom and I can like dress like, okay, mom, so this <laughs> happened, <laughs> you know, so I can like, I've always hey, been your open. mom sounds very cool. She's cool, she's cool. So I've always been able to like, I talk to her about any relationship, right. talk to her about anyone I'm dating, you know, so I tell her all these things. So that's why I feel like, I'm just going to put this out there. That's why I feel like I'm a 26 year old virgin because I'm very, very, in, I'm way too informed. <laughs> I'm too informed, guys. <laughs> no, but, but realistically, I've always been like a, Okay, I know all these. I, I know I've heard too much from my friends. I know all these stories. I live vicariously through everyone already. And I'm like, I don't want to do this. Not yet. Yeah, right. Yeah, so I think really yeah. making the informed decision. So is knowing doesn't important. actually make you want to do it. Yeah. In fact, sometimes you don't know, so you want to experiment. Yeah, for sure. Right? And then so you say no, they want to do. So yeah, it actually yeah. is counterproductive. Yeah, and when you're told to say no to something, it's going to be like, but why? You yes. know, why do I say no to something that's supposed to be fun you know it's supposed to be good so so yeah it's like you shouldn't be told what to do you should be just 
given all the resources, information, and you should be like able to just constantly ask questions mm. and and just have the right avenues of like information whenever, wherever. So yeah, I think that's really important. And of course, it starts with sex ed in school because that's like, I mean, other than your parents, that's really the next thing you're exposed to to like like a wealth of information that people that you trust are, are giving to you. So yeah, schools <laughs> be more progressive, like New Town Sec. <laughs> yeah, I'm really. I didn't know. I didn't know that was a. I mean, I went to secondary school like 10 years ago. So, yeah, so I, I'm quite impressed with my school, actually. That's yeah, because uh, as opposed to, a f- you know, abstinence-focused model, mm. at least your school was giving you some tools, right? In case you wanted to experiment. In case. You, <laughs> in case. <laughs> yeah. yeah, so I'm grateful like, that I think schools out there that are trying to be more progressive. And, and yeah, like, like, kids, don't rush into anything you're not ready to do, okay? <laughs> so now let's move on to a game of true or false. Okay. So this is going to be... Just testing yeah, just my general knowledge. Correct. <laughs> so it's actually going to be about sexist laws from around the world. Okay. So you Bring just got to guess true or false and we will, if it's, we'll tell you what's the right one like, eventually so we can talk about it. Okay, so the first one. And then might, we might appreciate like, you know, Singapore is so progressive <laughs> in comparison. <laughs> yeah, we're probably going to be like, oh, Singapore's great after this. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> Say only. Say only, but not true. <laughs> Anyways, okay, the first one. Iranian wives need permission to travel abroad. True or false? True. Unfortunately, you're correct. So not only do, do women need a notarized permission slip from their husband oh to apply for gosh. a passport, they also need their spouse's approval before leaving the country. So unfortunately, it's still very true. Yeah, so <laughs> I mean, I wish it wasn't. La. Yeah, so the next one is a 15-year-old girl can marry any man older than 18 in Singapore. True or false? A 15-year-old man can... 15-year-old girl can marry any man older than 18 in Singapore. False. False. Okay, so fortunately, <laughs> like you, that's way too young in Singapore, and that's great. So in Singapore, the minimum, minimum age of marriage is 18. However, in Tanzania, due to the 1971 Tanzania Law of Marriage Act, it sets the legal marriage age for boys at 18, while girls can be married as young as 15 with parents' consent. Mm. But I mean, honestly, it's it's... It's so disgusting, but obviously at a, in a lot of places, a lot of countries, they still have child, child brides. So this is not as shocking, but I wish it was shocking. You know, I wish this does not happen anywhere else. But 15 is way too young to make a lifelong commitment like that. La. I think under the uh, Sharia law, though, you can, mm. there are exceptions to the 18 rule. Mm. You do need special permission. Yeah. But, you know, we felt as aware that that was a bit young too, yeah. right? Um, like, gosh... Yeah. Below 18. And um, you, you barely even know about sex ed. <laughs> yeah. And you're yeah, getting married. So that's a lot. Mm. Yeah. So the third one I have is in terms of nationality, women in countries like Jordan, Lebanon, and Monaco are effectively second class citizens. True or false? True. True. So in Jordan and Lebanon, a uh, child needs a Jordanian or Lebanese father to automatically gain citizenship and their mother's nationality is not passed on. So if a Jordanian woman is married to a foreign husband, her, her children do not have the right to become Jordanian citizens and are therefore denied as access to vital public services like healthcare and education. So the mom's nationality does not matter, basically. So that used to be the case in Singapore not so long ago. Mm-hmm. Uh, maybe about 10 or 15 years ago. So not oh. so long ago. Yeah, that's recent. Um, it's quite recent. Mm. And I think that they actually changed it Mainly because they wanted more Singapore kids, oh. you know, so not okay. even because it was yeah. like gender equality, oh, but man. you know, there was sort of, sort of a other reason right. for that it made sense. So this means Singaporean mom and foreign dad, and yes. then the child gets to be Singaporean because the mom's Singaporean. Yes, okay. but that didn't always used to be the case. Mm. When I started uh, yeah. at AWARE, it wasn't the case. So that's that a post-1992 <laughs> thing. Even if the child is born in Singapore, it does not matter. Child born in Singapore. Uh, I think child born in Singapore, that might be okay. Mm, because I think it automatically Singapore. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's very stressful though to have to worry about your child's nationality and which one, which parent it has to take after. Like you're not even talking about their looks or genes. Eh? You're talking about nationality and their rights. It's a lot. <laughs> okay. So the next one I have is in Cameroon, a man can stop his wife from taking a job. True or false? True. 
It's true. Cameroon is one of the 18 countries where a husband can prevent his wife from taking a job if they believe it is not in the best interest of the family, leaving women at risk of remaining trapped in poverty with no independent income. Yeah. Yeah, so that is... That is so unfair <laughs> to not be able to like just and and I mean sometimes what if they just want to work because they're just gonna help out in the family? What if it's just to help make life better for everyone else? But you know, it's just because you're a woman you can't. It's yeah. just So that right in Singapore is actually written into the women's charter. Mm-hmm. Uh so it says a woman can have a profession. Yeah. So thankfully there's something explicit as well. Mm-hmm. Not that I think even before the women's charter that was possible, but they actually did write it into the women's charter. Just to make sure we're all on the same page. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And that's that's the last like true or false question that I have. Yeah. So that's why it'll take two hundred and two years for gender yeah, equality to, to be on the same page. <laughs> two hundred and two years is way for the too world. long. But let's hope that in Singapore we see it in the next generation. Mm. Yeah. Right. Hopefully. I mean like that's so there's a gender equality review going on as we speak. Next year, right? We're going to get the... Well, it sort of started. Mm-hmm. You know, I think they're, they're gathering the, the groups to do the consultation. So mm-hmm. work has started. Yep. And uh, we hope that this will be uh, something that will propel gender equality forward in the next generation. I think Singapore's done quite well. And, you know, it, it really boils down to the fact that we have no resources except for people. Mm-hmm. And so we could not afford to leave girls and women behind. Yeah. We needed them to be also pulling their weight. Yeah, and, and, and we've been ready to pull our weight <laughs> for a long time. We just need to let us, you know? Exactly. <laughs> right, so, uh, so, so for that reason. but So women, you know, started to do paid work. Mm-hmm. But again, you know, so this asymmetrical thing about men have not pulled their weight mm-hmm. as much in, in homes as much as women. Yeah. Of course, that has changed too, but it's still not equal. Yeah, right. so, so I think that's where it needs to move in the homes, mm-hmm. and we are hopefully on our way there. We are getting there. It seems like we are. So, and I'm excited for like the results of the white paper and everything next year. Hopefully, hopefully we get there way faster than the rest of the world. So here is where I think Singapore can be a leader because mm-hmm. already we are a leader. I mean, you you read all these examples, yeah. and they're really, really, you know, uh, quite terrible. Right, uh, in in, com- in comparison, um, so we have the lead, and mm-hmm. I think, and, but we are not the leaders in the world. Yeah. We are ahead of many other countries, mm-hmm. and hopefully, with this, we will actually uh, be one of the top few yes. in the world. So, yes, yes, bitch, that's the goal. <laughs> Okay, so we've been talking a lot about a lot of heavy things and I forgot to do one of the most important things that I do every episode. Yes. Which is to cheers our (laughs) chai. (laughs) So let's finally take a sip of our chai. Cheers. Cheers. (laughs) (laughs) Not actual chai. It's Thai ice milk tea. That's good. (laughs) It is. Okay, so now we can... Go back to this conversation that okay. we were in the midst of. <laughs> so I guess locally, like I mean, yes, we can. We, Singapore is definitely very progressive when it comes to these things, as compared to a lot of other countries in the world. But locally, we have seen a couple of really problematic, like things said in the media about like things that take us very, very like many years back. You know, things that make us like I thought we were progressive. What's happening here? So I guess a very like. Huge example that Owe actually posted recently on Instagram was something Lee Kuan Yew said in 1994, the year I was born. So I was not there to say anything back then. (laughs) Yeah, I am today. (laughs) No, I'm kidding. But I I did not know about this until I saw the article that you guys posted. And the byline literally says, uh, Lee Kuan Yew regrets giving equal rights to women. So, could you tell us a little bit more about this? <laughs> yeah, so I think Lee Kuan Yew, you know, I think this was the time when uh, he thought that graduate mothers were not having enough um, babies. Mm-hmm. And he, thinking out loud, I think he was thinking out loud, you know, and he was like, oh, okay, we sort of created this problem. And, you know, because once you have education, women have education, they have many many more options than mm-hmm. just getting married and having kids, yep. right? So many women did choose not to have kids, not to get married at 20. I think my mom got married at 21, right? And then to to uh, live a life as mainly as a mother. Mm-hmm. Uh, 
Um, so yes, I think the government was not sure, right? Mm. At some point, like, did we do the right thing? Yeah. Like, <laughs> you did the right thing, right? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah. for sure. Mm. Yes, I think weighing everything, yes, fertility is uh, an issue in Singapore. We're not reproducing ourselves enough. And that is just one of the consequences. But many, many benefits. And many, you see, if we actually had more gender equality, I think that would be more babies. And so this actually has been... OS uh, proposed solution. Mm. If you promote, if we had, because we have seen this in other countries as well, yeah. uh, women will decide, and, and they are the ones that make the de- decision, yeah. right? Mm-hmm. Okay, you know, if I'm going <laughs> to carry a baby and I'm going to have a, a, a kid, it's your call. It's <laughs> yes, on your you. call. Yeah. And, you know, I'll do it in the right conditions, mm-hmm. which also include that I have enough support mm-hmm. to both be a mom as well as to have a great career, mm-hmm. right? So if all these conditions are there, there will be more, m- 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 most likely that women are more likely to have kids. Yeah, it's like a never-ending cycle to like blame it on like the, the oh, women are too educated now <laughs> and then to like try and take that away. It's like, it's not going to solve the fertility problem on the yeah, spot. Yeah, and of course you couldn't, yeah. you know, this was just, I think, thinking out loud and really... Uh, not not really such a serious thought because how do you put that genie back in, into the bottle? You yeah. can't, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, Christina we're out there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, but, but yeah, it's, it's, I mean, for sure he was thinking out loud because this was a lot to put on like the news back then. This is a lot. It's a b- very bold statement to make. And um, in the caption that you guys, when you guys posted this article, you guys also said that a couple of women came together and that's how AWARE formed. Yes. Yeah, so that's, that's, now it makes me a little bit like, at least something good came out of this, you know? At least something oh, good yeah. came out of his silver lining of this horrible piece of news that... So that was 1994, yeah. but in 1985, he, he really did try to make this policy, mm. right? So the policy that he, he tried to, uh, Lee Kuan Yew's government tried to, to have was uh, graduate mothers can have, should have, encouraged to have three or more kids and mm-hmm. you will get... Um, uh, incentives like the school of the choice for your third kid. The graduate mother scheme. Graduate mother scheme. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But, uh, and those policies were not very popular. Mm, yeah, for sure. Yes. Uh, yeah. It's so, so objectionable, right? Yeah. Um, but yeah, that's the founding of AWARE. That's the founding story of AWARE. Yeah. That was a long time ago. Yeah. 1985. I'm so glad AWARE formed. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> uh, 35 <laughs> years ago to be exact, mm-hmm. which is why we're celebrating our birthday mm-hmm. this year. Yeah, and we will get to that. We'll tell you what's happening on OS birthday this year. But before that, there was also another really problematic like analogy that was in the news this year. So I remember reading this and before I made, before like people were commenting publicly and it was like, how is this okay? I remember reading it, I was so disturbed. I was like, is this really in the Straits Times right now? So this happened during the GE 2020 and the PAP made a domestic violence analogy about Dr. Chi Sun Juan. And the exact words were like, imagine this, Dr. Chi claims you you said you want to beat up your spouse. You deny it and show proof that you neither said this nor have beaten your spouse. Instead of apologizing, Dr. Chi says, victory, I extracted a promise from you that you will never beat your spouse. So when I saw that, I was was speechless. (laughs) I was very disgusted because I was like, did they just casually make a a beat up your wife like analogy in the news, like on the ST? So what were your thoughts when you saw that? (laughs) That was a lot. <laughs> okay, so this analogy mm-hmm. is sort of an, arg- an old argument that lawyers use okay. to prove to this kind of argument. Okay. okay. So I could understand that they use that, but I'm like, gosh, not in this day and age, yeah. you cannot say things like that Very anymore. Very distasteful, it's, yeah. It will be, yes, it is, right? Mm. And it will be seen as, uh, because we are different level of sensitivity and mm. expectation. Yeah. So the norms have changed since... You know, when lawyers used to say things like that, right? Mm-hmm. So, so nowadays, we, we cannot say things like that. Yeah. And so, yeah, I was a bit shocked. <laughs> shocked. Yeah. And, it, and it was just very like, wow, you would say anything to help make your case. You know, it just felt very like, this is a lot. This is so insensitive to people who actually go through things like that. Yeah. People who, and people don't yeah. realize it's a legal argument that lawyers used to mm-hmm. make. And so then they like, oh, how come you say like this? But actually, yeah. it, it's that, but... To people who don't know this, they're like, this is really offensive. Yeah, for sure. And I think, obviously, the average person does not know no, this. No, exactly. Yeah, so when it's on mainstream media, it was very overwhelming, for sure. Right. Yeah, so, and, and I was just thinking about, like, people actually go through this. <laughs> so this is traumatic yes. to read. Yeah, so I guess, for me, that was, like, one of the... In recent in recent news, I think there was another incident recently. Like, you know, everyone's... We've, 
we're all talking about the Orchard Towers incident last year, and there's there was a girl involved in it. Like mm. she was a part of the the gang that was involved in the fight and everything, and. Mothership has headlines like saying saying that oh Natalie Xiao leaves leaves Singaporeans thirsty, like they're literally saying that this girl who was not a murderer but involved in a murder, like she was they're literally calling her a thirst trap. They're saying things like oh you know she's leaving men thirsty in Singapore and and the comments are saying oh my god you're so beautiful with your fame you should try be an influencer you should do all these things and I'm like. Y'all are forgetting the context and that someone is actually dead from this. And reading Mothership's headlines have yeah. been very triggering, of course. Right. Because seeing seeing the word thirsty in a murder case, I'm like, yep. come on. <laughs> so object and that's also objectification Absolutely. for sure. So it, it's not about the issue is not like it's not her. It's not her fault. She looks good and people are people want to say these things. It's it goes back to objectification of women and why are you focusing on her looks when there's clearly a huge thing that you're missing here and there's other things you can prioritize here and there are other things to make your headline more like attractive than sexual objectification of course yeah yeah so yeah people gotta step up <laughs> people gotta stop going back taking us back like decades <laughs> yeah i mean so you think that people calling it out should help but then maybe they think well that's you know there's no such thing as bad publicity so we'll keep doing it because people get outraged and this is good for us yeah so i'm not really sure what to do about those things mm. right when there's no law about these things yeah yeah it just goes back to at the end of the day we are publication and we want the clicks so it worked yeah so i think it's uh, i mean i'm glad people are like talking about it yep. people are actually saying that Wait, how is this okay? You know, people are yep. finally asking these things because yes. I think like years so ago we that wouldn't have, have some impact. Yeah, hopefully. So, so those are a couple of like examples in local media that have been a lot. <laughs> but right now, we want to talk about a lot more like exciting stuff happening with Aware. So, before we get to Aware Fest, could you briefly share with everyone like the work that Aware does on the daily, sure. like the the counseling, the helpline, okay. stuff like that. So, so firstly, this year has been like the most busy year of <laughs> all years. Every year we're very busy, but this mm-hmm. year because of COVID, yeah. we've been even more busy. Uh, so we run the Aware helpline, mm-hmm. and helpline is the best way to get help, right? Especially yeah. when you can't get out of the house yeah especially during COVID that's why our phones just didn't start ringing okay (laughs) Uh, we needed to have an additional line Mm. and we also started a chat service so family violence increased Uh, that also meant people stuck in their homes couldn't call us safely some of them that's why we started a chat where we said okay you you can come at three o'clock and we'll be there for you right Uh, so um, the services have been very busy Mm -hmm. For two months, lockdown, sexual assault dropped. It's mm. like, okay, maybe it's good, right? And also the team needed a much needed breather. Yeah. But right after lockdown, it just went up again. And so now it's higher than ever. So unfortunately, that actually hasn't come down. Overall, the year will be probably higher than last year. Mm. Um, and then because COVID shone a light on so many different areas where you could see the gaps, the cracks in the system. Mm-hmm. So the research team was busy documenting everything, Mm. right? Because it's it's really a a very um, opportune time to really see, okay, you know, uh, people who uh, maybe in the past didn't used to to, uh, go for, um, apply for social services Mm -hmm. or financial aid. Now they have to, Mm. right? Uh, Do they know how? Mm. And um, all the things that they couldn't um, actually do, like, they have to show that they are self-employed. Mm. Got no documents. Yeah, Don't even know that whether they're self-employed or not. What does self-employed mean? Yeah. So there were all of these things that mm. we had to document. So yeah. it's been a very busy year. Uh, so in terms of research, there are three areas that we are looking out for. right? And the research leads to advocacy to, so that we have better laws and policies. Mm-hmm. So sexual assaults, one. Mm-hmm. Uh, low-income uh, uh, families. And thirdly is the aging of Singapore. What does this mean for women? Mm. Right when you and I might have to take care of the parents that we love, mm. but maybe less uh, less of that responsibility is shouldered by the sons mm. uh, in many families. Yeah. Then how will that affect our own future mm. as we age? Yeah. Are we going to be poorer? Will we have enough to actually support ourselves? Mm. So all those things are things that we are researching and trying to advocate for for good supportive laws and policies. Yeah, no, you guys do amazing work. So thank you. Like this year has 
has obviously been especially tough for a lot of like families, a lot of women out there. So thank you for like the second helpline. Thank you for like giving people so many avenues to just be able to reach out safely and just be able to like talk to someone and just get the help that they need. Yeah. So that's y'all have been doing amazing work for thirty five years. So yeah, don't we didn't just find out right now you know <laughs> yeah so of course like I will like link all the helplines the all the services that you guys have like in the description so if you guys need any avenues to seek help like you know exactly where to go and you know what to do and now let's talk about OFS so you guys are celebrating your birthday and it's happening it's going to be a five day event 25th November yes. to and the first November. time that we're doing something like this because it's going to be completely virtual also yes right? so, so actually <laughs> that's what we discovered too we could mm-hmm. have bigger and uh, you know more uh, forums uh, and events panels uh, because of COVID Mm. People had nowhere to go. <laughs> <laughs> they could finally go, like, make good use of their time <laughs> and watch good. Panels. Well, there were things, you know, there was more competition then for people's time. Mm. So, yeah. uh, so our audiences were, uh, you know, averaging at least a hundred for every single thing that we were doing. Mm. Then we're like, okay, um, our birthday. Let's put. Let's do curate special programs. Mm-hmm. So we have a debate, uh, and the topic for that is is love or rage a better fuel for justice mm-hmm. you're doing a uh, trivial trivia night for us <laughs> not trivial though no it's not gonna be <laughs> <laughs> yeah trivia night is so much fun actually i met karina on a virtual trivia night once so i i saw her on screen i was oh, like you did that's see karina. Me. Yeah, yeah yeah they introduced <laughs> me before before i started it's like that's karina by the way i won a prize like, yeah of course so so that's how i that's my first time meeting you but this is the real meeting ah. <laughs> yeah so i'm gonna be hosting trivia yeah night so it's, you it's feminism and intersectionality mm-hmm. so so very cool yeah we have something on uh me too hashtag me too mm-hmm. in not in singapore but in asia Ooh, right so yes. we have singapore malaysia thailand uh indonesia mm-hmm. what is happening there yeah um, and you know hashtag me too changed uh our sexual assault care services so mm-hmm. Uh, before hashtag me too we were at say a certain level and after that we went up by 50 percent mm-hmm. right in terms of the number of calls coming in yeah. and it's never dropped that means there's a new level of awareness and a new norm right where mm-hmm. people will will seek help yeah which is so great. what has happened in other countries mm-hmm. right and what other you know big cases sometimes yeah. it, it takes a like the monica bay case mm-hmm. also caused um the uh, numbers to go up mm-hmm. Every time there's a big case in the media, it goes up. Yeah, I mean, it definitely we need like, no advertisement. Yeah, <laughs> it definitely Sadly. like gives victims a, a chance to feel like okay, I'm gonna be heard. Yeah. So that's why they they are finally speaking up. So, unfortunately, it's because of a, another horrible case. Unfortunately, it has to come to that. But it's it's great that people are speaking up. It's great that people feel comfortable enough to like share their own experiences and to maybe speak up about something that could have happened like many many years ago. So yep. because still very valid. Uh, emotions and your experience so you know whenever no matter how long it takes you know speak up eventually yep. and yeah that, that, yep. that's all that matters at the yep. end of the day then we have yeah. something on activism and social media mm-hmm. and I'm doing a session on the women's movement in Singapore so some of the things that we talked about mm-hmm. I'm going back uh, the last 35 years and actually like so a little bit more about the graduate mother scheme and, mm. and other things along the way so the progress that we have made which is great uh, and also a lot of the things that we still have to work on. Mm, yeah, for sure. There's still so much work to do. Like we have said, Singapore is very progressive, but of course, we want to bridge that gap way before the 202 years. <laughs> so we're gonna, we need to like put in all the work we can. And I actually wanted to ask you, what is something you think that people can do in their daily lives, like their every day? What's something that they can start thinking about, talking about, or like actively trying to do to like help bridge that gap or to like help? start these conversations yeah i mean you know in your daily life whether you're at work or at home mm. there are actually many things that i, I guess maybe we are socialized to, to just sort of accept mm-hmm. but um you know if you, if you're at work then is it like it's always the women who are clearing up the coffee cups mm. or serving you know so sometimes this just sort of happens and women might do it naturally or the men might say, hey, you know, this person will clear up. So so there are things like that. Yep. Or you hear comments that are like, hmm, that is stereotyping mm. or that's being quite dismissive or, you know, somewhat sexist. Yeah. You can try to find ways of actually calling it out, mm. right? In a way that's safe, in a way that is, you know, that makes sense for, for that particular uh, environment. Mm. Um, how you bring up your kids, 
Yeah, for yep. sure. You can be a cool aunt as well. <laughs> I, I'll yeah. go like raise all my friends' yeah. kids. I'll be the cool aunt. <laughs> no, but yeah, 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 that's that's so important. You know what yeah. you do, right? What you do. Yeah. Thank you. And I think that young people are really woke. They do like <laughs> amazing work, right? I mean, the social media stuff they do, the mm. graphics and just sort of getting a lot of these messages, you know, they 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 make things actually really easy to digest. So mm. Yeah, I th- I think that um, whatever your interest is uh, in in women and gender, mm. uh, that so long as that that because there's so much work to be done, so you yeah. can definitely make a difference. Yeah, and and you're right. Like I think it's just a matter of sometimes just following the right Instagram accounts, so your feed right. can be filled with. You can learn something on the daily. You can just like learn something new. Learn something that you maybe have conversations that you've never had, or like just read comments. You know, yeah. and understand so much. The more. aware Instagram yeah. has just grown like amazingly right it's exponential <laughs> growth we didn't actually pay so much attention to instagram mm-hmm. and now we're like wow that's the fastest growing of our social media it is. and it's a really great way to learn about what's happening in singapore yeah. and the issues that still exist yeah it's the most like like concise and shareable yeah, yeah. and the, the team is fantastic like get deep. Yeah. so yeah yeah make sure you check it out make sure you follow it and i guess another huge important like thing that you can do is you don't have to be a woman to talk about these things, you know, be an ally. So you can be a dude in the office here, a sexist comment, you know, you can be that guy who stands up and be like, hey, that's not okay. You yep. know, so you don't have to be personally affected by something to speak Oh up. no, yeah. Be I mean, ally. we could only do this work with allies yeah, and male sure. allies, you know, because they tend to have more power in society still. Mm-hmm. And that's why we're still fighting for, for equality. Um, They can do a lot. Yeah. So use your privilege, use your power, definitely, right? Yeah. Um, for those who have a little bit of money to contribute, this uh, Aware Fest is also a fundraiser. Mm-hmm. So you can either uh, buy an Aware uh, Fest pass, that's $40 to attend all the events, mm-hmm. or $10 per event, and we have a house party. Ooh. So this one's a little bit more expensive, but it's going to be very fun. Okay. Uh, so all our parties have got a dress theme. This year's theme is outrageous. Oh, wow. Right? Uh, <laughs> nice. You know, best dress for group and for individuals. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's food and then uh, we have a very special program. Okay, nice. Mm. That sounds very exciting. We are spoofing the most sexist things that have happened in Singapore in 2020. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> it just from this year? Yeah, just this year. Oh my God, that means there's so it's, many It's here. called the Alama Awards. <laughs> oh, nice. <laughs> okay. And this year got many. <laughs> oh no. Unfortunately, <laughs> there's many, but it's great that you guys are parodying it so we can <laughs> laugh at this and make fun of it and change, you know? Some of which <laughs> have been featured on your program. So, oh. yes. <laughs> That's a sneak peek for y'all. <laughs> yeah, so I guess you guys can also like get all the information on, on the festival microsite. So, it's aware.org.sg slash awarefest. And of course, the Instagram account and everything will be linked below so go check it out and get your passes and be at the house party <laughs> yeah and also be there at the at the trivia night because I'm going to be there <laughs> so it'll be a lot of fun yes and yeah I think we've covered a lot today I hope this was very useful for everyone out there and thank you so much for oh sharing no. so much thank you it's this really was fun talking to you very important so thank you I really appreciate it and before we end the episode we always do this thing where we have a song recommendation each so today we talked oh. about gender equality quality and all these things and you want to share a little bit more about the song that you picked yes except forgotten name it's, it's hard hard out, out, hard hard out there mm. okay so that's <laughs> lily allen's song okay uh s- um so on my way here i was like listening to my feminist album so this one <laughs> i was like okay hard out hard out here okay let yes. me play it for okay. everyone I know this song. Just now when you asked yes. me, I was like, I don't think I know it, but it's the yeah. kind where you hear it and you know it. Yes, <laughs> yes. So People don't know here. the title. Lily Allen, right? Yes. Okay, so check it out. And also the song that I'm recommending is very basic, <laughs> but it's important, okay? <laughs> the Britney one is my jam. So... Yeah, I mean, we got to empower each other. We got to be there for each other. Girls got to stick up for girls. Guys also can stick up for the girls. <laughs> so we all just got to <laughs> stick, up, stick up for each other and just be there for one another and be amazing allies. Just bring up your kids, right? You know, just be better yeah. people. No, I think I think the girls have to stick up for the guys to also, you know, it, guys actually have a really hard time to, mm. to, to give care, to yeah. like do all the soft things that girls yeah. can do, right? <laughs> To yeah. be mushy and you know, like to cry and yeah. and so we we have to also yeah. uh, 
uh, give space and encouragement yeah. to, to okay. the men in our life. It's okay, man. I'm there for you. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> what happened? <laughs> no, but yeah, I, I think yeah, everything everything we talked about has been so amazing. So thank you once again no, for being on my pleasure. this. Thank you so much for being on this episode and all the links will be in the description box below so check everything out and I'll see you guys at Aware Fest. Thank, Thank you. you. You've just made it to the end of an episode of Chai Me Bitch. Wow, you listened to the whole thing. Ah. You like me, then say lah. <laughs> but if you liked it, make sure you're followed and subscribed so you know every time a new episode of Chai Me Bitch or any other Pretty Please video is out. Okay, <laughs> bye-bye.